Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo Cani Corso. So I'm out here with Mona and um taking her on a on a good walk. She's really starting to get very big and uh looks like we've got quite a few puppies in there because she's a very large female biggest female that we own she was imported from serbia um as an adult because she was just so nice and i spent a small fortune on her and we're finally getting something off of her the first time we tried to we tried to get her um paired with a male in europe before she came over here and that didn't take and then we brought her here and um we, she was paired with Mad Mortigan. That didn't take. That was a split uh, split cycle. And so now we put her to Preacher. And um, and that was a win. <clears throat> so um, we do have very limited availability for a couple females on her litter. And, um, and I did want to add, we may have males. I don't want to say that we won't. It's possible. Um, there's no telling, you know, how many she's got in there. But... This is what I'm, um, I wanted to make the video about because normally I wouldn't make a video just to just to place out some pups like that. But the thing about it is, is that um, I posted a picture of Mona on Instagram and um, basically said that none of the none of the puppies will be sold for breeding purposes. And there was some um, there was some differing opinions. Some people were just curious as to why. Some people were angry, and. Um, and so I, I realized that it's, it's been a while since I've made a video talking about this. And so I wanted to address this, this topic for you guys um, as to why I do not um, allow people who buy my dogs to breed my dogs. So um, one, of the, one of the biggest reasons why is the calls that I get. Um, I get a lot of people that will call me whenever they've kind of... Um, hit a, 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 a block in the road and they're needing some help. Um, I've had people call me that bred their dogs with no papers and um, couldn't place out their puppies because uh, they were able to place out some of them, but it, it, there was a much bigger litter than they had anticipated. And, um, and they were having a hard time placing out the puppies and they wanted my help. Um, and also the reason they called me initially was to buy a blue dog from me with papers <laughs> um, for breeding. And, and so we got to talking and all that and um, why don't, and then he's, uh, you know, kind of fessed up to what was going on. And, and it was like, he hadn't learned his lesson. He thought that if he just had the right color, cause he knew that those certain colors sold, that it would be okay. And if he had the papers and, um, and anyway, it just, it was, um, it was not a happy, I was, I helped him. I talked, in fact, I talked to him multiple times. The thing about it is, is like, I may not like what you're doing, but that does not necessarily mean that I'm, that I won't, you know, help you or, um, try to steer you in the right direction. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not going to not tell you how I feel about, you know, what you're up to. Like, I'm not going to sit there and be like, you shouldn't be doing this, blah, blah, blah. But, but I will, you know, let you know that the, these are the consequences of this kind of behavior and how to, how to fix that going forward, which I don't think is too much to ask if you're asking for my help to begin with. Um, but so, um, and a lot of these people, it's another thing, it's another one of the calls that I get is, um, I had a guy call me who basically had to surrender his female to the uh, vet because um, he could not afford the cost for the emergency cesarean. And the thing about it is, is that, and those of you that have been watching for a long time, more often than not, Corso have issues when they are having puppies. Um, it is common when you are breeding large breed dogs, particularly those with large heads, um, it's, it's just, um, it's something that happens and you need to be well versed in pulling puppies. Um, and then also have the money ready if you end up needing to get that cesarean. And a lot of people don't cause a lot of people that are trying to, um, produce puppies are doing it because they need money and, um, they don't have money to start with. Typically they spend all they have on the, on the dog itself. So I don't want to produce, you know, um, a dog that is going to be in a home 
that um, isn't going to get the medical care they need or, you know, they do get it and, and the dog ends up, you know, um, being spayed and, and being in a shelter because the owner had to surrender the dog to the vet and they, you know, and now it's in a foster and it, and it's, that's the, you know, we don't want our dogs in shelters. Okay. It's a really big thing for us. And so, um, and then it looks bad on all breeders, right? Because now the shelf, all the rescue people, oh, the breeder couldn't even afford the cesarean. And so here's, you know, here they are. And here's these puppies, you know, sh you know, adopt, don't shop. And so you've got that stuff going on. Uh, it's just not good, right? Um, I also had another guy call me who was looking to buy a puppy uh, for breeding. And then basically confessed to me that he had a female that was in labor that had been in labor for over 24 hours. And he didn't know if he should take her to the vet or not. And, and I'm just sitting here and it, like, and then I mean, when I mean a labor, I mean, she was in active labor as we were on the phone and, and, um, he had gotten the quote and it, and it seemed kind of like he didn't have the money for the cesarean. Cause you guys, vet bills are ridiculous now. Like, like literally $3,900 is a good price for cesarean from what I've seen. I have not found cheaper. Now granted the two that I had were complicated. They were blondie and they both had, um, they both had, um, like, you know, she had, um, uterine tears, but, um, but anyway, but regardless, even the one that I had for Belladonna was very expensive. So it is not, um, something you can do when you don't already have, when you're not already flush with money, because it's, it's, um, it's a, it's a gamble and you're gambling with your dog's life. Like all of it. it's really, really bad. And I've just seen that happen. I've, I've seen it happen. And so, um, and then on top of that, I, I just feel like, um, I don't want to sell one of my dogs to somebody that doesn't care enough to know how to pronounce the name of the breed correctly. And that doesn't know how to identify the the correct um uh like phenotype for the breed right phenotype is the way the dog looks it's, it's what we call breed type if you can't tell the difference um then you just shouldn't be doing it you know what i mean like it takes a long time like i didn't start off as a genius at this breed i didn't start off with being able to identify good phenotype i wasn't able to there was a lot of things i couldn't do but the difference is that I learned and I grew and, um, and no one, like I did not start off with dogs like what I have now, you know what I mean? So the thing about it is, is like what I have talked to people about doing, um, both Reese and I have, um, talked about, cause there's so many people that contact us, um, for breeding and, um, and what I've considered doing is putting together a course and really educating people and giving them all the knowledge that I've taken years and had to fly across the dang world to get, okay? And, um, and, and we will basically educate people that want to be educated on structure, on pedigrees, on everything from, you know, the act of conception to, you know, labor and pulling puppies, like all kinds of stuff like that. Nutrition, just like it will literally be everything you would ever need to know to be, to be, to know what we know. Um, but we are going to charge for it. I'm not giving it away for free. And, um, and what I will say is if we see people that have a skill for it, Okay, because this is what I what annoys me is that so many people think that they can breed, but they don't recognize that it takes skill, and 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 it's it's insulting. I'm not gonna lie, it is. You would not hire a bad plumber. Okay, you can be a bad plumber, you can be a bad electrician, you can be a bad painter. There are you have to have certain skills. You have to be able to read body language and know the dogs. You have to understand the nature of a dog. You have to understand structure and the way that that impacts a dog's movement and working ability. You have to understand temperament and the difference between a bad temperament and just general natural behavior, which is really hard for a lot of people to understand when it comes to Batista. So many people think there's something wrong with Batista because he's a dominant, aggressive male. And it's like, no, he's everything that a male should be. I mean, that's natural. Like the, 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 the ability to domesticate a male to the point that he will not behave that way or that he will tolerate other males is mostly comes down to really personality, 
But even having said that, um, you know, there, I told this one girl who was asking, I was like, you know, you have no idea the impact that you could have if you only bred males that were docile and sweet. You could very well be breeding low testosterone males and end your line just because your males lose their fertility. So it's a very complicated thing. It's not as easy as people like to make it seem. And when we do this course and we see people that have an ability, that have a, a genuine interest in it, you know what I mean? Like, like I had the desire to stay up until three. I would have to put myself to bed, literally force myself to go to bed from researching pedigrees. You know what I mean? You have to be that kind of person to actually excel at this. You, I mean, it, it shouldn't be rocket science, but you should actually enjoy this and be interested in it. And if you're not, if the only thing you're really interested in is putting two dogs together and producing puppies, then, then you're not cut out for this. And I'm not going to sell you a dog. And I hope nobody else does either. <laughs> um, so those are the main reasons. And then there's the also the other thing, which I'm not going to I'm, I'm going to be honest about I don't want my stuff being bred to people who don't recognize that there is a flaw in the um, American uh, Corso. Like what I mean by that is the traditional like old American stuff, um, you know, the basically Neo Rottweiler stuff like that is um, something that I I think we should all be breeding away from. I'm not saying that if you have that stuff that you should get rid of it. Although sometimes I am depending upon what it is, but ultimately psh, get out of that. Um, I, um, I, I just, there should be a recognition that, that that stuff was a mistake and a stain on the reputation of American breeders um, from that time. Uh, well, those that did it, I will say that because there were plenty of American breeders back in the day that didn't know that that stuff went on, but those that did it, those that participated and those that knew, um, shame on them. And, uh, and we need to get to this point where we, where we recognize that, a, that a mistake was made and we move forward, um, with, you know, fixing what was done wrong. So, you know, if you have American stuff, doesn't mean you should throw it away, but you need to be aware of that and you need to be moving in the right direction to wash the blood clean of that stuff. And and that's something that we talked about. There was a, a breeder um, here in the States who's also an AKC judge. Um, we talked with him and he said the same thing. You know what I mean? It was done. It's in the past. It's there. No one is saying you should get rid of all your dogs, but you should be moving in the direction of, um, of fixing your lines and recognizing the breed. We do not want to end up like the pit bull where no one knows what our breed is supposed to look like anymore because all they recognize is the mix, which is the bully dog. You know what I mean? So it's going to take work. You know, it's, it's already happening. You know, used to be, they never even admitted to the fact that there was Rottweiler and Neo in the lines. But now that that study came out, um, they've had to admit to it now. And so obviously things have um, started to move in the direction of honesty and they've admitted that that stuff's in there. And so now that we know that we can all start to move forward in the right direction. Those of us that have the best of intentions, there are always going to be people that are going to uh, put their foot down and say no. And they're only going to want to work with that American stuff and it's they're stubborn and that's all they believe in. And, you know, that is what it is. But we're not working with people like that and they're not trying to work with us. So that's all I got to say about that. Hopefully that will answer everybody's questions on Instagram so that I don't have to keep answering the same question over and over again as far as why I'm like this. But, um, you know, it's just it's just who I am and I, I've, I've seen it and I just don't want to be a part of it. It's already happening. There's already a bunch of people who are getting into breeding courses that shouldn't be. And it's about to hit an overpopulation crisis because the people that are doing it don't take their dogs back. That's another thing. Uh, that's another reason why I won't do it. They never take their dogs back. And I get calls all the time from people desperate trying to find someone to take their dogs because the rescues won't take them when they're over a certain age or any, you know, they got behavioral problems or something. And I'm like, where's your breeder? And they're like, oh, he can't take them. All right, then. And, um, and it's like, we always take ours back. 
You know what I mean? Always. No matter the age, we take them back because we have the network. We have the resources to find those animals' homes. And that's what is so important. Um, and they are our responsibility. We do not want our animals in the responsibility of the city or a rescue because that's our responsibility and we should um, have that burden. Come here. Good girl. And so, um, good girl. So anyway, so... Um, you know, that's really, that's really what it is. So it's a long winded video, but it needed to be made. So I hope you guys are having a good day and I will talk at you later. Bye.